welcome back. Today we have a thrift haul. <laughs> so my mom recently visited for a week and one of our favorite things to do is thrift. So of course we had to hit up some of the New York City thrifting and flea markets. So that's what we did. And I just wanted to show you everything I thrifted this week, just kind of like a collective haul. And I've got a little bit of everything I've got. Like I've got stuff from a flea market, I've got stuff from Goodwill, and I have stuff from like places like Crossroads where they like price a little higher. So we've got things from like all across the board, all the different types of thrifting that there is in the city. And of course, I will try everything on and show you clips of that. Let's just like jump right into it because I kind of have a lot. So the first thing I want to talk about is actually something that I didn't thrift here, but my mom brought it for me. She thrifted these in Wisconsin. I am obsessed with swans. Like, you know how every old person, old woman in particular has like an animal that they gravitate to or like a thing. Some old ladies collect all things squirrels and like have squirrel signs in their bathroom and like squirrel like plates or like owls. Mine is swans. I love swans. I think they're so majestic. I have so many swan themed things that I've thrifted over the years. And so when my mom found these brass baby swans, she had picked them up for me and I love them. So these are my beautiful, beautiful swans. In our living room, we have like this brick wall runs through all of the rooms in our apartment. In the living room, there's like a wooden shelf built into the wall and we haven't put anything on it just because it's just kind of exhausting. I'm not a huge decorator. Like I don't go out and spend money on decorations. I don't really plan. I don't know, interior design isn't really like my thing. I pick up things here and there. So, like when I find stuff like this, then it's cool. So we're gonna add them to those shelves in there and it's gonna be like the first piece that's on there. And then you can like kind of position them to where they're like, you know what I mean? hugging. I love these. I love brass. I love swans. And I think she said they were $4 each or $4 per the pair. I can't remember. I think they were $4 each. So obsessed. I literally in this room have a gold swan mirror that I thrifted when I lived in Hawaii. So it's like perfect. I'm very excited about these. I had to show you. And now we can get into what I thrifted in New York City. So the first place we went was actually the Dumbo Flea Market. They do their flea market every Saturday and Sunday. It's really cute. I've been before actually which is where I found these earrings they're like a gold um, vintage bows they're only three dollars like they have really good prices on stuff and as we were walking through Dumbo we stopped at Second Street which is a secondhand store in New York City but it they sell designer too so you're not gonna thrift stuff you know at one of these places for really really cheap some stuff is cheap but most of it is like designer I got this Ghani shirt and my mom actually picked this out she was like oh do you like this and she hadn't heard of the brand and I was like uh I love Ghani but I would never buy Ghani full price it is pretty pricey I think this shirt was like $300 originally and I bought it for $39 so it's definitely like a lot more than you would pay at a Goodwill or a Salvation Army or like a garage sale they have these nice brands and this fit me really well. I really love this. It's like this, I don't know if you can see, I'll, you know, you'll be able to see it better when I try it on, but it's almost like a scoop square neck, but it goes down pretty far. And it's got this ruffle and it's almost like a fake peplum at the bottom. The peplum is coming back and I thought I would really hate the trend of the peplum, but I actually really love it. I think it's very chic. It just like adds something to an outfit when you don't want to tuck in your shirt, but you still want to give yourself a defined waist. It's got like this like like stretchy bodice, which is nice. Really love it. I've been looking for this kind of silhouette lately. Blouses with really, really feminine detail. So kind of like a more simple piece, like it's plain black, it's not really loud, but it has this fun element to it. So I bought that and then uh, as I was walking around, I found one more thing. And this is originally by Zara and it was only $5. That's the cool thing about sex. Second Street is that you can find stuff at a good price. Like I would have paid more at Goodwill for a dress. I think they priced their dresses at like $10, which is crazy. So this is only five bucks by Zara. And it's just this like, it's kind of a shorter dress, but again, it's 100% cotton, which I love. It kind of has a mock neck and then it has this like Victorian kind of ribbing here. I've really been loving um, like a French style with just these classic like English countryside. I'll pop up some images of what I'm talking about. I don't know how to articulate it correctly but this vibe is what I've been really into and I just think this with a pair of like leather riding boots 
so cute but I also might turn it into a top so I'm not sure because I, I just really love the top so the dress I would definitely need to wear like tights or shorts but if I turned this into a top it'd be really cute I'm going home in September and my mom said she'd help me alter it into a kind of like a boxy crop top if I wanted to so yeah those are the two things I got at Second Street as you can see they're like a very basic <laughs> color palette but I think it's gonna give my outfits like a really good building block a really good base so then at the flea market I I picked up this amazing jacket. So I definitely got bamboozled a little bit, but at the end of the day, you know, these people curate their booths and when you fall in love with something, that's why the internet, it's like good for the buyer, but bad for the seller. And I am a reseller, so I like respect the work that goes into it. So this was $100 and then I found it on Poshmark for 60. In the moment, I just fell in love with it and then my mom bought it for me as a Christmas gift. <laughs> so thanks mom. <laughs> that's usually what we end up doing for Christmas is like when we're together, if I find something, she's like, do you just want that for Christmas? I'm like, perfect. But I love this. It's a uh, Ralph Lauren and I tried it on and I just fell in love with it. There's something about this red color but it has navy blue pinstripes. I've been seeing pinstripes all over and it's definitely going to follow into fall and winter. Like in the summer we're getting those pinstripes in a linen, you know, in like drawstring pants, a linen top, long sleeve top, really flowy and it's like a light blue and white stripes and I think we're going to see more of this kind of pattern for fall and winter. So you know maybe it was a little pricier than like what it should have been but we did talk him down it was originally 128 and I was like that's kind of insane and it's really timeless I think I'm gonna have this for years it's gonna be one of those things that maybe comes in and out of style but I'll always have in my closet so when it comes back around I'm like ready for it you know what I mean oh just a super exciting find I cannot wait to style this for fall. So then the next day, which was Sunday, we went to the Grand Bazaar, which is a flea market that's only open on Sundays up on the Upper West Side of New York City. And we hit a home run. There was a seller there that had the best collection of vintage purses. She had vintage Duty and Burke and vintage Coach. And my mom bought two purses and I bought one. <laughs> they were so good. I kind of collect vintage coaches. Um, this will be my third one now. I've been really looking for kind of like a messenger bag, tote bag, something that's deeper to where I can fit a water bottle in it. And I've been looking for tan leather and that's literally exactly what I found. So let me show you. This is my new precious baby. I love her so much. It was $115. But if you know vintage coach reselling, you'll know that this so this is a really good deal. If I got this on Etsy, this would probably be 200, 250 because of the condition. Condition. This is pristine. The leather is gorgeous. It's perfect. There's no scratches. It still has the little coach tag. That's pretty rare. Um, a lot of people took these off for some reason. And so it's uh, hard to find them with this tag. And I do like to find them with the tag. I think it just, um, you know, gives it that little extra specialness of the vintage coach. This is her. It fits a water bottle, which is amazing. I, car I carried this like pretty much for the rest of the week with me because I could fit a water bottle in it. It's got this great flap, but then what I like too is there is a zipper. So you have the option to zip the whole top. I've been just leaving it open for easy access. And then it's got like a pocket here, the main pocket, a back pocket, a pocket within the main pocket. And I really liked where this hit me on my waist. It has adjustable punch holes on each side. I am taller, so that probably makes it easier. It hits me like right at my hip, which is what I like. Anything lower than that, I it really bugs me. But yeah, isn't this just so yummy? <laughs> and I literally just bought sandals that are this leather. I always like to match my shoes and my bag. That's like my one weird fashion rule that I have in my head. I mix metals all the time. Like I wear gold and silver, but with my leather, the shoes and my bag, it like has to match. Like if it's a red leather and a brown leather, that's okay. But if I'm wearing black leather shoes, I have to wear a black leather bag. Same with brown leather. I don't know why. I am absolutely in love and she is going to be well loved in my purse collection. After the flea markets, we hit up a Buffalo exchange, which neither of us found anything in there since it was Sunday it was insane it was so packed there were people everywhere and the Buffalo Exchange is pr it's pretty small like it's New York City like places are small and so we were like shoulder to shoulder with people and it just like wasn't an enjoyable thrift experience and then we went to Crossroads it was kind of the same but a little less packed and I did find a dress and if you're not familiar Buffalo and Crossroads are also thrift stores that are like curated so you're paying a little bit more picked up this dress and it had the tags on it still so it's by Abercrombie and normally it was selling for like 130 I believe and I bought it for 28 stunning stunning 
stunning. <laughs> I went back and forth if I should buy this or not. I just wasn't sure if I would wear it, but I wore it for the first time yesterday and I felt amazing in it. So it's got these puff sleeves. And then what I really love about it is the chest here has that like really fine overlap detail. Do you know what I mean? It's like, I don't know what this is called, but I like it. <laughs> and then it has pockets and it hits about my mid calf. It's this really pretty print. I usually don't go for cool tones. I think that's why I was like a little thrown off if I should get it or not. I'm usually not a purple girl. Like I'm usually a hot pink girl. Usually wear dresses all summer long and they're really good to wear to work for me. Just really pretty. It's just very feminine, very girly. I'm really excited to dress this up with like just chunky jewelry. Just kind of make it a little funky. I talk a lot about like Scandinavian influencers that I follow and I can see this being a good dress as a base for like these kind of looks. I'll pop some on the screen. I'm like really inspired by that kind of dressing and I think this would work because it's usually like something hyper feminine like this but then with more masculine pieces like you know a pair of Tevas and like a utility bag to kind of balance it out and I think that's fun. So this will be a really cool dress to play around with. And then the last place that we hit up for the week was yesterday at Goodwill and I'm so sad. They closed my favorite Goodwill in the city. <sighs> This Goodwill was literally to die for. It was amazing. It was in Greenwich. It was gorgeous. <laughs> I literally found something amazing every time I went there and it's permanently closed. News to me happened like a month ago. So Goodwill is already on my like shit list. Uh, I hate Goodwill with a burning passion. The problem with New York City is that thrifting here is honestly not that good. Maybe I'm wrong. I would love for someone to enlighten me and let me know in the comments if I'm just like so oblivious to where the good thrift spots are. You go to the Midwest and you can get so much shit for literally ten dollars it's so expensive to thrift and i get it when it's curated but when it's a goodwill we'll get to the item that really pissed me off we'll we'll get to why i am so i've said this a million times i'm on the verge of boycotting Goodwill because they are doing me dirty. Anyways, um, this top I got from the Goodwill, it's a Zara top. I like Zara stuff if I can thrift it. I don't really understand the hype of Zara. Like it's just a madhouse in there. It's so cheap. Everything feels cheap. You're literally getting like Shein quality at an insanely inflated price. So I like it when I can thrift it. This top I think is stunning. Oh, it's coming undone. Let me retie. <laughs> Let me retie her. Been too passionate about the thrifting. Okay, I hope it... <laughs> Pretend that was tied like cutely the whole time. So I guess we now know one of the struggles of this top. I also don't know what bra to wear with it. I'm just like not wearing a bra right now because I'm like at home and it doesn't really matter. But if I went out, I think I'd probably want something. I'd probably just go like little nipple pasties if we're being real. I just don't like it when a bra pokes through. If I was concerned about that, I'd just throw on a little bit of little stickers. <laughs> but it's just so darling. I've been seeing tops like this everywhere. I love the big flutter sleeves because it leaves this whole part open. You can breathe. I love the little ties. It's so cute, super feminine. And I can see this going with a lot of outfits. I literally feel so hot. <laughs> so that was the first thing I picked up. Okay, now that I'm done talking about this top, wanted to talk about it first because I'm wearing it. Let's talk about how Goodwill did me so dirty. I, how many times have I said this? I need a comp compilation of me being like, Goodwill did me dirty. I hate Goodwill. Guess what Goodwill did to me today? It's like, I can't shut up at how awful they are. And then I go back. I saw this really cute, and you know when you overpay for something and then it wasn't as exciting as it was when you first looked at it? That's what I'm experiencing. It is cute. It's it's by Vince, so at least it's like kind of designer. But when the hell did Goodwill start charging $20 for blazers and jackets? Because the last time I was there it was $10, which is still too much. But like I was mentally prepared for $10 and then my total for the day came out to 60. And I was like, that seems high, but you know, like the, the Goodwill workers are so mean that like <laughs> you're just trying to get out of there as fast as possible. So I was like, nah, whatever, like pay. And then I looked at my receipt and this was $20 and the rage that filled my chest was imminent. The anger I feel towards Goodwill, let me just show you this and then you can laugh at me for even wanting this in the first place. How did they charge me $20 for this? Please watch my videos so I can finally get monetized so I can afford this crap that Goodwill is pulling. I have potential, there's potential here, right? But now I'm just so pissed off. 
it just kind of reminds me of like a cropped trench with the big buttons. I have an inkling that these are going to come back in style. And it was just cute. Like in the moment, it was cute. It was $10 cute, not $20 cute, you know? And they didn't really have their prices posted anywhere. Like they usually have it posted. Anyways, I guess I'll just show you some clips of me trying it on. Maybe I'll try to sell it on my Poshmark because I'm just so angry that I can't. I probably won't even bring myself to wear it because it'll just make me mad to think about how much money I spent on this stupid thing. Goodwill, watch your back. But the rest of the stuff I got was cute. I did pick up a Lululemon long sleeve that they didn't find, so it wasn't marked up. Shocker, because this would have been like $30 otherwise. Um, it's just a long sleeve, you know, little workout thing. I am gonna be listing this on my Poshmark. And then the last two things I got there are really cute. So it kind of made the whole trip worth it. It made that jacket worth it, even though my rage and hatred for Goodwill is truly unmatched. The next thing I found is by English Factory, which is, I guess, a, this was normal like a hundred bucks but I didn't really know. I've been seeing people wear bloomers like little cute bloomer shorts and then like mashing ruffly tops and I really like that vibe. It's kind of the same with the long sleeve Zara dress and this Zara top. It's they're all kind of in that same category of that like crisp white hyper feminine paired with you know kind of funkier pieces. I basically want to be dressed like a Victorian child. <laughs> And that's what this is. It's literally a Victorian child's nightgown. But the detailing on this is just stunning. Like there's a lot of fabric there and I love this ruffle. It is a size small. It was a little, a little, just the tiniest bit tight if I was like to do a full range of motion. But when am I ever doing that out in public, you know, so like I'll be okay. It's kind of a baby doll dress. Again, it's a little shorter than I would feel comfortable out in public. I think it would be cute paired with shorts, kind of like that bloomer short look. It's got pockets. I think I can do some really cool, cool looks with this. The outside is 100% cotton and the lining is polyester. I kind of hate when they do that because polyester is so gross. Like I might end up just taking the lining out because I would most likely wear this either over shorts or pants so I don't really need it to be lined. A polyester lining is so tacky. Make the lining cotton as well. This isn't helping anybody. It's just gonna make me sweat more. It's so thick that I don't even think like the lining isn't really doing anything so I probably will cut that out and then I could also turn this into a top like right under this where this ruffle ends. It'd be a really cute top so I'm gonna play around with it and I don't know I might get into altering dresses into tops <laughs> because it's the top that I really like. Like is this not a baby at their christening? <laughs> I'm ready to be baptized. <laughs> like that's what this looks like. And this is the last thing I picked up. I found a ton of J Crew pieces in a size four, but this is the only one I bought. It was like somebody dropped off their 90s, early 2000s collection of J Crew dresses. There were so many of them, and I find that you know places like J Crew, The Gap, Banana Republic, their older stuff is such better quality than what it is today. J Crew today, they have good stuff. Don't get me wrong, but some of it is again like. She and quality. It's just crazy. Like you can go to a J Crew and they'll have a polyester skirt, $150. And I'm like, polyester is also on my list of hate. Goodwill and polyester. Those are my two biggest enemies in life at the moment. Anyways, let me just show you this dress. I'm so like dramatic today. It is like a scoop neck. It's a very like work appropriate dress that I'm gonna wear in a casual way. I'll probably wear it to work too. Fits me like a dream. It's almost like a skater skirt. It's that really nice material where it's kind of crinkly a little bit. I don't know what material this is, but it's like that kind of cotton. You see how it's got a little bit of a texture, a little bit of a crinkle? I love that. Pinstripes, again, the jacket was pinstripe. This is pinstripe. I guess I've just got an affinity for pinstripes right now. This is the showstopper at the back is this like ribbon tie. It is so cute. I am obsessed. Like I said, I made a whole video about old money, which you should definitely go watch. I spent a lot of time on it. I'm obsessed with old money, the old money aesthetic. I'm obsessed with like the Upper East Side of New York, going to the Hamptons. And this is a dress that those girlies would wear. It's very classic, that early 2000s J. Crew style. It's so good. I love wearing pink. I think this with just some low and my new bag would be so cute. It's so darling and it, it fits me so perfectly. I've lost a little bit of weight recently, not even because I've been trying, but just because it's New York City and you're walking like 15,000 steps every day. I thought it might be a little tight, but it fits absolutely perfectly. I'm usually a six, but now I'm more of a four. I just loved how this hugged me. It just gave me, I have kind of like, um not broad shoulders, because when I say broad shoulder, I think of like swimmers. They usually have more, you know, muscular shoulders 
shoulders. I guess I just have like elongated shoulders. <laughs> um, my like clavicle is like long, so I think I can hold pieces like this really well. There's just something about like the clavicle and the shoulder that I think can be so feminine and delicate and sexy. Do you know what I mean? Like there's something about, like there's a reason why we put shimmer there and like rock stars, like put the little shimmer, you know, on their shoulders. I really love stuff that shows that off, especially as a flat chested woman, as a proud A cut member. <laughs> um, you know, this isn't really where, um, it's never like my boobs that are like, the showstopper of the shirt, it's my clavicle. I love that it's got this band right here, almost like a belt, but not, you know, it just defines the waist. Okay, so that was everything that I thrifted in one week in New York City. Like I said, let me know down below if you have any like hidden thrift spots, any, any good thrifting that I need to check out in the city because I am desperately looking for them always. I am going home to Wisconsin next month, so we should have some good thrifting content out there. It's just, so much better. There's so many more places to thrift. They're so much cheaper and the vintage out there is surprisingly immaculate. Like so good. Like the stuff my mom thrifts is crazy. I'll link my mom's Poshmark down below. She sells the most amazing vintage pieces. She has an amazing curated selection. I mean those brass little swans if that gives you any idea. That's the kind of stuff that she's um, selling on there. So definitely check her Poshmark out. My Poshmark is always linked down below but mine is not as exciting as hers. She's way more active and she gets like sucked cooler things so if you want some true good vintage pieces check it out I'll leave it down below that's it for me I hope you enjoyed this video and I will see you in my next one